What's good everybody? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Zamir from Access Tunes. In this video, I'm going to give you all five beat making tips in Cubase 14. All right. So if this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, smash the like button and share this video to all. So I have actually made a couple of videos before about beat making tips, especially in Cubase, right? Um, but I feel like I need to update those information right now, which is why I'm making this video today. So if you haven't checked out those videos, please go ahead and check it out because I believe some of the information in that video is still valid until now. All right. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So the first tip I want to talk about is not only applicable in Cubase 14, but it's also available on any other version before this. Okay. Okay. So this is one of the features that I actually like from Studio One, where when I export an audio in Studio One, it quickly opens the folder that the audio is being exported to, right? So that is not the case with Cubase, unfortunately. So however, when I export audio, right, I have found a way to quickly go into the folder that I exported the audio, okay? So for instance, let's say I have exported audio right now, right? So the audio will be sent to a folder, right? So it's going to be whatever file that I've selected here, whatever folder I've selected here actually, right? So what I usually do is I go to file, I go to new project, and I'll go to whatever the file that I'm currently at. So I'll just right click on it and go to show in Explorer. Okay, so now it's going to bring me to the folder. So instead of going to my drives, for instance, my local drive, my project and all that, I can quickly go to this folder by just right clicking it and go to show in Explorer. So it will open this folder and all I have to do is go to mix down and find that file, right? So this feature is available in the previous version of Cubase as well, right? So that's the first step. Let's move on to the second one. So this is about the pattern editor. Okay, I know I have made a lot of video about the pattern editor, but you know, I just keep finding new things in pattern editor. So I want to include that in this video, right? So let me go ahead and quickly add a track with pattern editor. Yep. Okay, so when I double click on it, it's going to create a pattern editor. So I'm going to go to the pattern editor right now. So what I like the most about this is I can quickly lay down some rhythm. So I can just drag it like so, right? So I can adjust the velocity. Right. So if I want to know what are the value of this velocity, right? So I can just press shift and click on here, anywhere here. So it's going to show me the value of those velocity, right? This is not only for velocity, this is for everything else as well. So for instance, maybe a gate. So gate and all that. I'm going to press shift and click and it's going to show me the value of these information. Okay, so that's cool. And if I want to reset these settings, right? This is the value actually. So just press control and click. Now it's going to reset everything, right? So now let's say you have this kind of gating uh, percentage, right? If you want to affect the whole thing, so you can press shift and drag it down, and drag it up, right? So that's really cool. And now you can see that it's actually being adjusted based on the the same level or the same proportion of the um, of these nodes, okay? Let me go and add a drum machine right now. Okay, now let's say I have a sample already added here. Let me use a different view. Okay, so let's say I want to add a uh, panning effect, right? So right click on it, go to pattern editor assigned to step automation clap, right? So now when I go to the pattern editor, right, I have this amp. So if I want to add some value here, I can do like so, right? Okay, I can press shift and adjust here as well. So you can see the percentage or the value is moving. Or if you want to reset the whole thing, right? You want it to be centered. So just press control and drag to the left and right. So now it's going to be reset, right? To zero level okay so that's pattern editors tip 
let's move on to the third one. The okay, third one is about programs. I'm going to go and add some instrument. Let's use Halion. Okay, so as you guys can see, I have a lot of instrument for Halion, right? So there's a lot of stuff here, right? So one of the way I can go and add those preset is obviously by going into this instrument and I can go and you know select each of this patch that's available here right I can do like that and then there's another way that I can do is by going into the instrument VST instrument and go to Halions here and then from here I can choose the instrument that I want right I can do that as well if you choose this way you can actually kind of uh, test those preset first you know so let's say I'm clicking this one right now I can hear the presets sample right so that is cool however there's another way that you can choose the program as well and that is by going into the track itself so I'm gonna right click here go to track control settings and I'm gonna choose programs right from the left I'm gonna click add so now it's on the right hit apply now you can see that I have a program selector here now I can also choose whatever programs that I want from this window here right so for instance let's say I want to have a violin oops violin okay now so I have all these violins short violins so let's just double click on it okay now I have this violin here I'm gonna play the violin right there okay if I go to the instrument I can see that it's here right so there are a couple of ways you can add or choose the preset in Cubase. So I find it really interesting. So that's the third tip for today. And let's move on to the fourth one. So the fourth one is about event type. So I'm going to right click on it, right? And go to track control settings. Okay, here you have this event type. So you just have to click on this again and add it to the right. And make sure you do this to all other tracks as well. So I'm going to show you with the instrument track for now, right? So I have this Helion 7. You notice that when I double click on it, it's going to open the MIDI part, right? So remember in the last video, I mentioned that if you add a track, let's say instrument here, and if you choose the pattern event here, when you double click on it, it's going to open the pattern editor. And if you press control and click, it's going to open the MIDI part, right? So now when you double click here, it's going to open the pattern editor, right? So if you want to double click and open a MIDI part, all you have to do is just click on this button here, right? Now I'm going to double click here, it's going to open a MIDI part, right? Instead of the pattern editor. So let's say if you accidentally created a MIDI track or instrument track with the MIDI part or pattern editor as the, as the default event type, now you can go ahead and just click on this button to reset it whichever the way you want and you can also see the information here you see this MIDI part here so when I click on this it's gonna go to pattern event right this is useful because sometimes I have a track here and I double click here in the empty area to create a new MIDI track it's gonna follow whatever that I have above here right so let's say if I want to double click and have a MIDI part I can't do it right now so I have to right click on it go to track control settings make sure the event type is added to the right and now I can adjust them accordingly so I want a MIDI part now just double click on here I got the MIDI part all right so that's the fourth tip and let's go to the last tip for the day the fifth tip of the day is about pattern editor I know there's a way for us to, to convert this to a MIDI part. However, there's no way for us to convert it back to pattern editor. That sucks to be honest, but uh, I hope Cubase will have this feature in the future. So what I usually do nowadays is that I create a track version. So I'm going to go to, uh, to a tra track version. Okay. So now you see that I have all these pattern editor and I want to keep them, but I want to duplicate them right so now the pattern editor is not affected but I'm gonna come here and go convert this to MIDI part 
okay so when I go back to the earlier version I still have them you know but I also have a MIDI part here so in this case let me just quickly program something here right let's say I have this drum pattern and this is a hi-hat and all that so now I can go okay I can go here and duplicate them again so now this one I can just convert it to MIDI part okay, this is useful because sometimes what I do is I like to dissolve the MIDI part to a different lanes right okay because then I can actually manipulate each of this section the way I want however if let's say I want to do another programming and I want the same file you can go back to the earlier version and I can play with it and then I can also dissolve it later on right so these are the five tips that I like to share with you guys today and I hope you guys find some value in this video if you guys did please make sure to subscribe turn on notifications smash the like button and share this video to everybody you know right so thank you so much for watching I'll see you guys in the next video